Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. We are here for your weekly K-State football recruiting update. But before we do that, let's get in and remind everybody that K-State's getting ready to go overseas. In just over a year, the Wildcats will be in Ireland. They will be playing in the 2025 Aer Lingus College Football Classic. And what better way to kick off the 2025 college football season than cheering on the Cats in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic in Dublin, Ireland. The Cats will square off with the Iowa State Cyclones on August 23rd, 2025. Whether it's a quick trip to Dublin for the game, a multi-city adventure throughout the Irish countryside, or exploring the Emerald Isle on your own, there's a package for you. Visit Cats2Ireland.com for information on official travel and hospitality packages. That's Cats, the number two, Ireland.com. All right, Drew, so... We've talked about cats to Ireland. Uh, that, those are guys that are going to be on the team next season. Some of the guys we might talk about today could be on the team next season. One of those guys that people are probably most interested in right now in terms of getting an update on would probably be RJ Collins out of Kansas City because he just got himself an offer from USC. So, uh, tell us a little bit more about what you think that offer means and if K-State is still in good standing with one of their DB commits. Yeah, I think that the USC offer isn't something to just kind of write off. Like it, it happened uh, actually like right after he uh, just got done visiting K-State uh, the latest time. But I think that it's something to monitor, but not something to really panic about and freak out about right now. I just think that his relationship with the K-State coaching staff and, and kind of K-State being that team that took a chance on him uh, the first time has really kind of played an impact on how it's going and potentially how it could end up. Because I, I think that a lot of teams have a lot of catching up to do with RJ Collins. I mean, he, he kind of pointed that out himself uh, when talking to me about the USD offer and just kind of about other teams. Uh, because I, I think that some people kind of see the commitments co go out and think, oh, like, there's probably a chance that, like, nobody's really talking to them anymore. No. Like, a, a lot of times, like, teams will talk with other guys up until, up and with committed players to other schools up until the, the signing day and after they get signed. And we saw that with Lincoln Cure that, Oregon, Kansas, and Texas A&M haven't given up and even sent him the official offers. So uh, it's something to monitor, but not something that I would really say is imminent. And I, and I think that I would be pretty surprised if R.J. Collins were to flip. All right, well, that's probably good news for everybody else to kind of hear. Uh, outside of that, it's kind of been a quiet time for recruits. I would I would tell everybody that if you want to know what's going on with recruiting right now, the best place to go is just to head over to On3 and read all the recruiting updates with each recruit that Drew has talked to. Um, but, you know, we, we talk a lot about 2025 guys. Some of the 2026 guys are starting to come into focus a little bit more and becoming serious. And uh, one of the guys that you talked to recently and got an update on was Tyron Parker uh, out of Topeka. He's going to be a receiver in the 2026 class. Uh, just give everybody kind of a, a, a refresher on what K-State is looking at with the 2026 wideout. Yeah, I really like Tyron Parker and think that he's a guy that could really rise through the recruiting rankings this fall. Uh, he uh, he has a, a better quarterback than what he had before at Shawnee Heights, which helps. And, and I don't think that he's done growing. I had somebody tell me uh, from that last visit that they think that he's even grown since the uh, the camp that he was at, uh, but he wasn't healthy during the K State camp. But K State still decided to offer, so that that kind of shows what they think of him and what he can be. And, and I think that they're what they're looking at is a guy that could be maybe not in that top two of the state of Kansas for that next for the twenty twenty six class, but potentially could be that number three. And, and I think that K State sits in a good spot. This was his second time coming to Manhattan. Uh, July 31st, and, and I think that K-State's probably in that firm top two, maybe even leading at the, at the moment, and I think that's a that's a big deal because the receiver position is something that has kind of been hit and miss at K-State recently, 
I, I like the last two receiver or the last three receiver class that they've gotten. And Tyron Parker would be another bigger X receiver that they've kind of been lacking. Uh, they have Trace Bivey and Andre Davis in that role right now. And, and I think that Tyron Parker could be that next one as, as that 6'3 player that can really go up and get it. Yeah, but I, I think that they're in a good spot. And, and it's one to really monitor because he's kind of made going to Manhattan a priority early on. So I think that even if he does blow up, I think that K-State will still be firmly in the mix. Uh, who else in the 2026 class should people be keeping a, a closer eye on at this time of the year? Because it's still August. Like we we know, obviously, with how the 2025 cycle has played out, that that took a little bit to get going. Once it did, it was fine. But 2026, is there anybody, like a group of two, three, four guys that you say, hey, maybe we need to pay attention to this one because could this be like, a, you know, recruits of past regimes where it's like, uh, like Ryan Howard and Gus Hawkins were done really early in their recruiting processes? Is there anybody in the 2026 cycle that would kind of fit that bill to where we're talking – somewhere before this coming season is actually done or before we get to like March of next year, there are 2026 20, guys that are either going to wrap it up or K-State would maybe have on the cusp of doing so. I'm not sure about having it wrapped up or being, I think if they could be close on a few guys, uh, the first one I think that, needs to be pointed out is J.J. Dunnigan from Manhattan. I think that K-State will be a major player uh, throughout his recruitment process, but it's not going to be easy. It's not a slam dunk, uh, and in recruiting, it rarely is a slam dunk, to be totally honest. Uh, Nebraska is probably that one team that is with K-State near that top. Uh, the other one that I think everybody should really know about, because I think that he – he really impressed me at the last camp, and I think that he might be the best player in the state of Kansas in 2026, and that's uh, Lawrence Free State offensive lineman Braden Wilms. And I think that K-State is making a move for him. Uh, I believe that he will be at the UT Martin game, which will be uh, which is a big deal to immediately go back to that, to the season opener after he was at the last camp July 25th. Kind of shows where K-State stands for him. And K-State has had some success going into Lawrence and especially at Free State recently. Uh, so I think that that's one to monitor. And then the the last one I think that everybody should really know about, uh, because he's somebody that I think K-State could potentially be on the cusp for uh, later on in the fall winter would be Ian Primer, uh, the tight end from Great Bend. K-State's really, really made a move for him. And, and I think that they're in a really good spot in you look at the last few cycles that tied in and K-State is really cooking on the recruiting trail. And I think that Primer would be another move for uh, K-State to really add on to that list. And, and especially you look at uh, the last handful of classes, it, it's tight ends from Kansas as well. Yeah, they've they've had a good track record there. Okay, the last thing I'll ask you about today uh, for this recruiting update, it kind of plays off of what you're talking about with, with Wilms is that Okay, it's a it's a free state kid. How much more difficult do you think recruiting kids in Lawrence has gotten or will continue to be for K State with Lance Leipold and everything he's doing at KU now? Where you know it seemed like the last handful of years before he got that thing going, like Chris Kleiman and K State, they they were able to go in there and swoop guys out of Lawrence get them to come to K-State and be productive players. I mean, I would even say a guy that's a walk-on on the team right now, like them getting Jet Deneen, who is from a KU family, even though Jax went to K-State, like to still be able to get Jet when the upward trajectory was there for KU football, that was impressive still. But how much more difficult is it going to be for K-State to continue to find success with recruits in Lawrence? Because Lawrence is producing really good talent. You've got two really highly populated high schools in, in that city. So you're going to have talent that comes out of there from time to time. Yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit tougher as it goes on, but it's kind of the same with KU recruiting like Western Kansas. Like it, 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 it kind of is a give and take a little bit, but I think that K-State with what they do in the state, that there is no 
real like there's no places where I don't think that they can go in the state and get a prospect. I mean, they were really close on Calvin Clements uh, when he initially committed to Baylor and then flipped to KU at the end of the cycle, when, uh, at the very end of the cycle. So I, I think that that's one thing to really kind of point out that I, with how dominant K-State is recruiting in the state, I don't think that there is a place. Yeah, there are some circumstances where it is tougher like Lawrence is a little bit tougher, uh, specifically like talking about like Joshua Galbraith is from a KU family and that, that makes it tough. But I, I don't think that there's a place where K-State is just like dead in the water. All right. That's that's probably good news for people to hear, but it does just seem like it's happening. It's out there. It's one of those things to think about because I think people are probably just off the, the face of things now going like, oh, that kid's from Lawrence. Like it's probably not going to be as easy, but encouraging to hear that you think K-State still has a swing and that if you get the right situation, they're, they're going to be able to be a player in there. Here's here's one other one to leave you with because this is just kind of off-season recruiting type talk, but this could give some enlightenment to people out there. How often does where a kid's parents went to school have an impact in their choosing of the school that they end up going to? Because – we, we we bring it up when oh this guy's a legacy to here you know and we think okay that's that's a shoein like you know it feels like uh, if you're a locket the K State ties it means a whole lot <laughs> to you uh, and then in some other circles it doesn't mean as much uh, for one reason or the other and then you talk about you know KU family ties with some guys for Jackson Jet Deneen it didn't mean anything to him uh, they they were good with making the switch over to K-State, um, to to the brothers and the family, it it made an impact. They ended up at KU. So explain in your experience how often uh, the family ties actually has to do with where somebody ends up choosing their home. I, I think it does a little bit, but probably not as much as you think. Uh, I mean, we you see legacies from all kinds of schools follow in that footsteps, but you also see the other guys kind of, give that other school like no time of the day but i so i think it generally just does just kind of vary on what kind of relationship that the parents have still with the school i think that that matters probably more than where they went to school to begin with all right yeah that's i just wanted people to to hear that from you and, and kind of give some insight there so uh, one of those things to take into consideration. But that'll do it for us today. Like we said, not as much going on right now. If you want recruiting news at this point in time, the best place to go is to kstateonline.com. Find us at On3, and you can read Drew's recruiting stuff there because he's giving you some insight into how things might play out. He has new commit watches going up. He also is talking to loads of these players that K-State in the 25 or 26 class has involvement with and kind of getting, hey, how have visits been, their their point of view, where the recruitment sits. So if you really want to know what's going on with K-State recruiting right now, the best place to get it is from the recruit's mouth, which really the best spot to do it is in those stories that Drew's cranking out for you every single day. So that is your plug to go over there and uh, get it going as well. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We will be back again next week with another full week of K-State football content.